hi, this is Joe again with another movie, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, hi, this is Joe again with another movie review. And for the discussion of this video, I'm going to be discussing the uh, 1994 Ron Howard film, The Paper. And because for, for those who don't know this movie, uh, this movie is, is about a fictional newspaper in New York City called The New York Sun. And it takes place one whole day. Uh, it's going to be how what story to put in on the front page for the next day. And it's like a typical New York tabloid newspaper. And this uh, movie saw Jason Robards, a modern contained in all of the newspaper. It's like almost 20 years earlier, he played Ben Valley and all the prisoners men. So it's kind of ironic. And all this was Michael, one, of, one of the two main characters is Ma Michael Keaton and Glenn Close. Plus, you also have Robert Duvall, you have uh, Marissa Tomei, you have Randy Craig. So, so you have a great cast in this, in this movie. Now, this movie, a little bit of trivia, this movie was actually filmed. Was where, where it was filmed, it was actually was at that point the New York Post building on 210 South Street. Uh, the reason why I know there was the New York Post building is because A, my father worked at the New York Post for 35 years, and B, there was the building they worked at. So, so it was at two, uh, 210 South Street in downtown Manhattan, right between the Brooklyn and Manhattan uh, bridges. L those who don't know New York City, it's right, right, right in downtown Manhattan. That's right on the East River. So anytime anybody who Right on the like the Q train, right across the Manhattan Bridge, you look you can look down like this and you can see the uh, post building, or what was the New York Post building, because now not not too long after that movie came out, they moved the reporters out to uh, Midtown Manhattan, where the Fox News building is in Midtown Manhattan by uh, Radio City Music Hall, and the the printers and the pre I mean, the press room is. They moved all that stuff to the Bronx. Uh, so they don't even use that building anymore. I don't know what it's even used for now. But, uh, you know, at the time they, it was used in the post building. So every, just about every room you see with the reporters or the Michael Keen was running around the press room where the, pre, where the press machines are. And the paper was rolling off the presses the, from there. The composing room, that, that was the room where my father actually worked in with the composing room. Um, you see, and the, and the roof of the building was all in the, what was then the New York Post building at 210 South Street. Uh, anyway, the plot of the movie is that Michael Keaton plays a reporter uh, for the New York Sun. And as the start of the movie, he's married to Marissa Tomei, who, who was on the verge of giving um, birth to the first kid. And they get a story that... When, when the movie actually starts for the movie to, for the story that's going on the front page of the paper uh, about it's two black kids who, uh, in Brooklyn who come across this car that's been shot, shot up and then two people who were inside the car were two white guys and then all over the car was, was written all this anti-white racist stuff and they had a gun right by the car and so of course naturally one of the guys that was about to pick up the gun and said don't pick up the gun they think we did and of course, sure enough, that's exactly what happens, and two of them got, end up getting caught and being arrested. And of course, they, Michael Keane found out the story, and said, hey, this is the story we should put, be putting on the front page. And Glenn Close plays the editor, and she says, look, we, we should put this particular hell in gotcha that two guys got arrested, that two guys got arrested for this crime. And Michael Keane says, I think I don't think this guy's dead. As well, if you can prove that this guy's dead by the deadline tonight, then we won your story on the front page. You know they didn't do it on the front page. If you can't prove it, then we might gotcha. You know it's a front page headline. Then, okay, so Manu King has been running around for the rest of, rest of the movie, uh, trying to prove that uh, these two black guys, black kids, didn't, didn't do it. Uh, which of course, guess what happens, of course, big surprise in a Hollywood movie, the two black guys didn't commit this crime. Uh, you know, big shot, only in a Hollywood movie, they go, they go this way, two black guys who 
Muy bien, en, en efecto, they are, they are innocent in the movie, and don't get me wrong. Um, but they are, they do happen to be innocent in the film. Uh, but, you know, wh wh whatever. So they happen to be innocent, and Megan Keenan knows they're innocent. But Glenn Close is determined, hey, we'll go with this headline, this headline's bad, we'll correct the next thing's paper. Megan Keenan says, oh, that's good enough, we have to get it. You know, as soon as we get ahead of any, any other those people in this town. Uh, so, so that's what he uh, does. And in the meantime, he's uh, applying or he is, uh, ha has a, well, we're not an audition. He, he has an interview for another newspaper job. And it's slightly better than the one he has, but you're better pay and everything else. And that's where he finally got the story that, the, that they may have another lead into who killed the two white guys in the car. And Megan Keenan says, oh, you don't have any proof of that. So I guess like a police source. We have to be, say, by a real, by a former New York City police detective, Mike Sheenan, who is a uh, local reporter in New York City now. I don't think he's working, working anywhere, but right, right now. But he used to work for ch particularly uh, Channel 5 here in New York. And he also appeared in uh, the movie Rocky Five as well. Uh, those of you who don't know. And so, oh, he and he was actually a cop, it's Mike Sheenan. He actually was the lead detective on the infamous uh, Preppy Murder case, so you don't know. I don't want to go into any more details, but he was the lead detective on that case. Uh, so he was Michael Keenan's source that says, hey, these two guys didn't do it because uh, we have a, a, a lead on this other theory. And which is a better theory than these two guys who may look like a racial incident, the hype, the racial tensions in, in uh, the city. And of course, we found out Mary King didn't know more Diggy and said, Yes, the story is true. Uh, but he, by the time he got the, the story was all written and, and set, he found out that the headline that Glenn Close was going to run was already running in the presses. So he went down to the presses and he presses the button and stuff, you know. The old saying in an old newspaper movie, stop the presses. They stop the presses. And to run Megan Keenan's story. And of course, they found out that uh, Glenn Close and Megan Keenan actually got into a physical fight in the scene. Um, but I mean, long story short, is that to run Glenn Close's story. And then she found out that, yes, found that Michael Keenan's story was actually in fact the real and true story. So Glenn Close changes her mind and goes back to paper and says, hey, uh, change it back to the other story. Uh, and this, this was after she was shot in another subplot. Uh, they had a little where Randy Craig criticized the head of the parking bureau in New York City because his, talk, his car gets getting towed. And meanwhile, the head of the parking bureau in New York City, he was double parked. And so he wrote a whole story over, over that. And that guy, and the Parky Bureau guy, was played by George Costanza. Uh, you, know, George, you know, George, um, Jason Alexander, who of course is more famous for playing George Costanza, was in this movie. He acts like a typical jerk. He usually doesn't in his parts. Uh, for George Costanza, the pretty woman in, in this movie, he actually accidentally shot he had a gun to shoot, shoot Randy Crane's character because he made him look bad. And he shot Glenn Close. I remember when Glenn Close was in the house, was, oh, I want to call him in the paper and get the story straight out. And of course, when they did, and the real story got printed out before anybody else's. And the two guys, the two black guys who, was arrested, who were arrested at the beginning of the film, uh, they ended up, of course, getting off. And that's pretty much how the movie And Mayor King stayed right where he is in the newspaper. At the end of the movie, and of course, uh, Glenn, uh, Marissa Tomei's character ends up getting, of course, giving birth, uh, gave birth during the film. Uh, I think that this was the first or second movie that Marissa Tomei made after her Oscar winning role in My Cousin Vinny. And she played a pregnant, you know, pregnant woman. Uh, of course, when every time you have a pregnant woman on television show a movie, they have to show them give, give birth. Um, which is why I think I think I mentioned this in my Oscar School Jobs review uh, video. 
where you had uh, Frances McDormand won the Academy Award for Best Actress for Fargo because she was the only time in, in film history where she, where she played a, preg a pregnant police sheriff. She never gave birth in the film movie. So they gave her the Oscar just for that. I said, that's had to be like the worst reason why. Uh, anyway, uh, for somebody, for not to give an um, award to somebody. But in the movie, the paper itself, I don't think the pa the, the, pa the movie, the paper, wasn't all that great for film. But it has a nostalgia factor for me because it shows the New York Post building, it was filmed in the New York Post building. And that's about the only thing going back. Like I said earlier, my father worked in that building. He knew every inch of that building because he worked here for three, five years. So, so he, the, the nostalgia factor was there. But in terms of the actual story, you know, it wasn't that, that great. Except, of course, if you want to know how crazy a newsroom gets just before uh, they have the, de the deadline is when the time will start rolling out the papers so you can get them out faster to all the newsstands and candy stores for some newspapers in the city. There are like thousands of them some newspapers. Of course, nowadays nobody buys newspapers anymore. You can see all, on, all online or on the computer now. So I'm a review of the movie The Paper. If you never check it out, you check it out, you know, just check it out, just watch it like once and, and, and you see it's not, the cast is terrific. I'm not complaining about the, about the cast or the actual you know, plot, but it's like too high paced and it's not that great of a plot. It should, they should have like a little bit of a better plot, uh, you know, real bad plot to it. Uh, but but as a story, I think it's not that bad. bad. It's not a great movie. But it's entertaining enough that you can watch every once in a while just to be entertained for two hours. For for two hours. Uh, please check out. Thanks for watching this video. Please click on it. Please read it. Uh, feel free to comment on it. Please subscribe to my channel and please forward this video onto your Facebook pages. And please check out my other videos uh, because I'm getting a little. Uh, I guess you can say aggravated over the fact that hey, my other videos are not getting the amount of views that I think they think it should. And meanwhile, I have one particular video with this movie review I did a couple months ago called Unfaithful. Uh, I did that a few months ago, and that movie, that video review I did for that film has over a thousand reviews. That's my first video they ever got at least a thousand views on. And I have videos on YouTube. They don't even have five, five views. And that and that sucker got that stupid review that I did for that movie. That got over a thousand. I mean, I don't understand why. Somebody out there explain to me why that that video review I did for my favorite has over a thousand reviews and nobody watches some of my other videos. I don't even have five views on some of my videos. I don't even have like like less than five video five views on some of my other videos. And that thing has over a thousand. I mean, I, I don't understand why. I just don't get it. Uh, so please check out my all of my videos, not just my unfaithful movie review. Check out all of them. Uh, you can check out all of them on my, U on my YouTube channel. You also can check out rallyc.com. And that's O O W D Y. Rallyc.com. You can also check out because Christine Moore, who is the rally reviewer, uh, whenever he, he's posting some of my, my videos on there, he posts the one at least one one video of mine a week. Uh, you can check out some of my older videos on his site, as as well as his uh, content. You know, with the TV trash videos, the PO Pizza Guy, the uh, you know, the resting mark, which he has done on the main videos of um, lately with the resting mark. Uh, Check out all of his content. His kind of he he does a terrific job, better job than I can ever could. On my on my videos, you can check out his videos as well. Uh, thanks for watching, and catch you next time.